use cases of Web3 through DPIN. This episode of the DPIN Hub podcast is brought to you by Scanit. Scanit is an innovative ecosystem designed to revolutionize the way individuals and companies manage, utilize, and benefit ethically from personal data. Scanit empowers users to rent out their data for fair value exchange. Hello everyone, Daniel from DPIN Hub here, and today I'm thrilled to have Sylvia, Gwei, and Sisi members of Shifi and organizer of Shipin. Shifi is an empowering community that provides DeFi education and resources for women, and Shipin takes its step even further by introducing women to decentralized fiscal infrastructure network and the thing that we talk about this every day, all day anyway, and we love to do uh, with more and more people as we can. Let's explore this uh, a little bit about Shipin, Shifi, and with these three people that are here in the podcast today. Uh, thanks so much for joining. It's a pleasure to have you here. A few days ago, like last week, I was part of a Shifi event as well, talking about the beginnings of Hotspot and Deep in Hub as well. Now you guys are here and it's my turn to get the questions to you uh, and, and take, get you in the podcast. Um, maybe let's start by you guys introducing yourself a little bit and talking about your journey into Shifi and then shipping. Why does this project exist and why it's so cool? Um, I'm happy to kick it off and hand it over to the to the rest of the team. But uh, so I'm Sylvia Sylvia Lacayo. Um, I actually got started officially in crypto in 2018 when I joined uh, Chainalysis, which is a blockchain analytics company. And from there, I was hooked. Um, actually, joined in 2018, but uh, I still wanted to find sort of my tribe and my people to learn along um, with. So I discovered Shifi in 2020. Um, for some reason, I had come across Maggie in a virtual capacity, and she was just kind of testing the waters of putting together this program called Shifi that essentially uh, was a community for, for you know, women and non-binary folks to learn about crypto together and get onboarded to this whole ecosystem that at the time was really very um, male dominated um, and I would argue still is. So it was kind of a brilliant idea and that's ultimately, I was hooked. I was like, yeah, I want to learn more about DeFi. Um, so I joined in cohort C number three and right now the uh, the organization is in cohort 12. So it's been, it's been a minute, uh, but I've been part of the community ever since. Yeah, maybe I can go next. Uh, so my name is Marikita. Uh, it's really lovely to uh, have had the opportunity to chat to you, like you said, just last week and, and quite funny to kind of, as you said, sort of be on the other side of that now. Um, so I joined Shifi quite a bit later. I was part of cohort nine. Um, so that was sort of at the end of last year. And I kind of, I've, I've had quite a few people sort of talk about their origin story in crypto in a similar way. So it was sort of like the pandemic, right? Like when we were all at home, and like it was the classic thing where I started like looking into originally Bitcoin and it wasn't actually so sort of like got on board by just buying buying a bit of crypto and, and sort of hodling, but didn't actually really kind of get too, too deep until I discovered sort of Ethereum and Web3 and sort of all of these other things that were happening in the ecosystem. And then, you know, that really kind of lit something up for me and I kind of went all in and I have been in the space ever since. So I'm a, I'm a writer. I've been working on sort of mainly social justice communications for the past sort of 10 years. And I think that's also sort of really what kind of it excited me about the space is sort of seeing, and I'm sure we'll get into it maybe a bit today as well, you know, with um, sort of energy and utilities and like how, you know, we don't have to be constantly waiting for sort of governments and institutions to try and solve these situations. Like we can actually take control and kind of do things ourselves as as a collective and I think that that's really exciting and compelling and yeah just sort of been bringing my storytelling and research and and love to write so that's kind of been the the main thing I've sort of brought to the space and just getting so much out of it myself so yeah in a nutshell that's that's me. And I'm Allison. Um, I come from uh, numerous years in Web2 marketing in Silicon Valley and I just got really sick of sort of the the grind um, I had been through several ups and downs of the market, you know, and I wanted something different. And I, and I started hearing, I think I heard about crypto, like on a podcast, I was sort of like listening to a lot of podcasts. And it was a, I think it was the boys club podcast. And they started talking about DAOs. And I got very involved in October of 2022 into DAOs. And sort of that was my first introduction. And for Shifi, 
it was a friend of mine who posted that she had just received a scholarship to join the latest cohort. I'm also from cohort and I like Glee. And, uh, and so I was like, oh, well, if she's doing it, because this is someone I've really admired. And I was like, I'm going to check it out. And I'm so grateful that I have, you know, it's, I mean, we can talk about that, but it's, it's, it's been an amazing journey. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm really happy that some initiative like that exists, right? Because like you said, definitely crypto is still uh, male dominant. I mean, tech in general, right? The whole uh, stamp is still very, very male. And we definitely need more women, more, ev- I mean, it needs to be everyone inclusive. And I'm happy for programs like that. And I definitely, we, di- we do need less bros, you know, uh, and, and, and more people, more different mindsets. I think that adds a lot, a lot of value. Okay, then Shifai started existed. There is like twelve cohorts, a lot. How how often does the cohorts uh, run? Yeah, they're they're fairly frequent. So I um, I guess it's going to be a, a couple of them per year. I guess since 20, 2019, 2020, up to twenty four twenty twenty four, and now we're up to twelve. So it they're fairly frequent. Um, the the way that it's set up is that it's um, in where it's from like eight to twelve weeks programming um with a number of lessons and they're broken up by theme um similar you know everything's from like it starts with you know what is blockchain technology what is bitcoin how did ethereum um start uh what is how do you set up a wallet and then how do you buy your first crypto what are some new knowledge proofs what's a DAO? where are some of these social decentralized social networks and you know what's the purpose of them so it's really kind of covering everything. It's like um, I, I read somebody say it's a it's an MBA <laughs> into crypto and blockchain. Um, so the idea is to really cover um, a lot of ground to get uh, women and non-binary participants to really um, you know hit the ground running if they're looking to change their careers, for example. And Shifa has had a lot of success with members switching careers into Web3 and getting hired by some of the biggest crypto companies, in addition to a lot of Web3 startup projects. So um, in interspersed with, in, you know, between the lessons, there are a lot of activities, a lot of um, engagement. So there are quests that help the members really um, grok or really understand the lessons a little bit better and be able to then practice on their own. Um, so I, that's essentially the, the bulk of what the cohort really um, is set up to do. And I, I do like this idea of getting more people like shifting jobs, sh- shifting careers into crypto. And it's very scary, right? Like uh, I've been in crypto for a long time and, and there's so many new things, so many new concepts that are not that easy to understand. Uh, it takes a long time. Like, like for example, every time someone joins Hotspot as a company, we tell them like we don't expect you to understand anything. Please ask a lot of questions. I love teaching a lot of explaining all those things because what is a private key? What's a public key? Let's, you know, there's a lot of uh, complexities, and the more welcoming the people feel, the better, it's good, the faster they're going to learn, right? How does this shifted from? I mean, not shifted, but how does the the shipping program got started then after that because i think that's your girl's mainly focus right like uh part besides shifi of course yeah so uh, one of the things that so shifi itself has evolved from lessons that are cohort based to now including programming like the summits so in real life events um as well as local meetups led by chapter leads we have been part of this community for a little while and active in the Discord and the Shifi Discord. We were interested in, um, so by we, I mean, you know, my, my two colleagues here and, and I, we were kind of chatting with each other about, hey, does anybody know how to set up a laptop on one of these decentralized compute networks? Because I want to start earning passive income. And so we got to chatting and realized there was a need here and an interest um, to set up uh, our own sort of uh, community or cluster within the Shifi community that was specifically targeting all things deep in. Um, and so that's, that it was very organic. Um, you know, um, Marikita and Allison kind of raised their hands when I, when I put the question out there and we decided to set it up. And this was actually not very long ago. It means it was, what, four or five months ago? Um, and it's, it's grown to be just 
yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is essentially this cohort. Um, but that was that was the genesis of it. And we got people interested in actually learning from the a lot of people still don't even know what DPIN stands for. They don't know we have to explain what is decentralized physical infrastructure networks. because uh, remember they're just joining uh many of them to learn about watching crypto and DeFi, you know, from from scratch. So it's been a lot of fun, but that was the genesis of how um the club got started. And then we knew people. Um, at Demo, I, uh, one of the co-founders and I both worked at Chain Analysis together for a while. So I reached out and said, hey, do you want to come and, and speak to our, our club here? And then it just snowballed from there and we got lots of speakers. Um, we do workshops and discussion sessions to kind of talk through what we've learned. Yeah, I think like I would just maybe add to that, you know, like, um, like Sylvia said, you know, we just kind of already passionate about sort of this space that we were sort of seeing emerge and wanted to get involved and, and also just not sort of keep that as something that was between us, but to kind of bring other women and non-binary people into the space and kind of learn along the side with us. Um, yeah, so it's just something we do in our spare time and uh, and we're really excited to kind of see where it's been going in, in such a short space of time, really. Yeah, just a few months, right? Like that's a lot of, uh, of things happening as well in crypto. There's so many uh, new things happening like it must be quite hard to get started i mean that's to be honest that's one of the objects the objectives of deep in hub as well is to get people who are interested about this ecosystem they are getting to know crypto or even a lot of people that comes to crypto from deep in because that's how we like we, we started deploying helium hotspot in people's homes and actually you know got people interested it's I, I like to say that Deepin is the gateway drug to Web3. So it's a good way for people to get started, right? Besides Shifai on Shipping, is it like a separate community? Uh, it's just a part like a branch of Shifai. Can you guys have an independence to run different things? How does that work? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um we I would say we kind of operate within the umbrella of Shifai. So kind of independently in a way. I, I think it really sort of speaks to the Web3 ethos, right? So you have this community. You know, I think we're like, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, Sylvia, but sort of 1,500 strong at this point, something like that. And there's this sort of real kind of ethos of just, you know, we whoever has an idea and wants to kind of run with it and build something to go ahead and do that, you know, and um, shout out to the girls who have their investment pod because, um, so that's Radar and Chats, who you know, they've had a, an investment pod sort of in a very similar format for a while. And, and we sort of saw what was going on there and thought, hey, like, you know, why don't we do something similar with Deepin? So, so one thing that we said in our very first session was also, you know, like obviously kind of welcome and this is what this is all about. This is what we hope to get out of it ourselves and hope that you, you know, also are able to 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 get from these sessions but also just wanted to kind of say you know if there's something in crypto or web3 that you're really into and you want to kind of bring them bring other people along with you and sort of create these spaces to go ahead and do that so um yeah i would say that we basically you know we have our own sort of little channel within the the shifi discord server and um we were just sort of allowed to you know I and mean, we have all the support from maggie and the team to just go ahead and sort of start chatting to people and bring people through and there's a lot of encouragement for that kind of thing so it is it is kind of like its own independent thing within shifi but i think there's like a really nice symbiosis that happens there as well because shifi you know it's sort of the main thing that i think a lot of people um, or the main reason people sort of may initially go to Shifai is for that structured learning, right? The cohorts. And then through spaces like Sheepin, there's sort of, it's it's yet another part of this ecosystem that can keep people involved and keep people coming back and, and sort of keep that network that little bit tighter. So yeah, I think that's what we're excited about. And it's really cool to kind of see what other people in the space are doing as well in the, in the Shifai community. I mean, like, yeah, one of the best things for me of crypto is the community aspect of things, right? And then after that, of course, it's like going further and, and narrowing it down to deep in that to the point that you go to now, I think next week, uh, this episode is going to go after Singapore, but uh, next week I'm flying to Singapore for Token 2049. And every day that there are multiple deep in events and, you know, like you, you get to know a lot of people, then you go to the events. It's like a, it's like a friend's reunion every conference that you go uh, so this community aspect is super, super exciting. I don't know. There's so many things I need to learn still. But, you know, as, like, as long as people are approachable, I can ask them and, 
in this like Thrive community. That's one thing that got me very excited in the beginning about Deepin in general, because, you know, like when I got started, of course, it was much smaller, but I spent a lot of time just teaching, learning, you know, it's, it's super exciting that it gets you build these relationships that four years ago was just getting started and still going strong, right? Yeah, I think that was so key. Um, yeah, and I, I loved everything that you brought to the um, the conversation that we had last week because, you know, I just felt that so much of, I felt in a way quite validated because I felt like so much of, of what you were saying and, you know, I mean, it's incredible to see really what you've been doing at Deep and Hub and, and, and with the event last week with Deep and Revolution, you know, like, um, but to sort of hear your reasoning behind that and how it all happened, it felt really on the one hand, validating, not so super encouraging because, you know, it's still days for us, but it was just like, oh, wow, like that's how we feel, you know, um, just the importance of those relationships and getting to see people either face to face in real life or, or like this is, is just so important. So what are the main challenges that you have right now on trying to grow this community? So one of the things that we've noticed um, is that, well, as communities grow and you probably will find this or, or have found this already in your experience as a deep in sort of OG, Daniel, is that as community grows, um, there is there's this balance that you have to try to maintain between, you know, growth and the quality of either the programming or, you know, the engagement you're going to get through the community. Um, so I think, I, and we don't want to necessarily speak for Shifi. At a, at a broad level, because that, you know, you could, you could definitely um, talk to Maggie. Maggie loves the sounder. Um, she can tell you uh, the struggles she has seen as the founder. But um, it's for, so one example of how, you know, a, a very successful community could, um, could make it harder for new entrants to really participate is, so Shifi, of course, is the, the cohort base uh, um you know, or lesson-based cohorts. Um, and they actually are really great about writing scholarships, as Allison was saying. Um, but also, it has evolved to include in real-life events like science. But not everybody can affla- uh, afford to fly to Singapore or to Brussels or ETCC or whatever the event might be. And there are there are local chapters um, and chapter leads who are passionate volunteers. I don't I don't think they're paid. Um, mm. That I that I know of, just like we're not, we're volunteers, right? Uh, very passionate about um, the topics that we each lead. Um, so then, this is where virtual communities and virtual programming, like Sheepin, really come in to fill a lot of those gaps of where you know people can't be in person at every event or can't be face to face, even though there's a lot of value to that, as you were saying, Daniel. Um, we're able to kind of fill in those gaps and, and solve some of those issues or meet, meet that need by being virtual and being as global as we can be and finding, you know, the time that works for everyone. So I'm on the Pacific time zone and I try and make sure that all of our, you know, sessions are, um, I, I don't mind getting up at six in the morning uh, because we want our content to be accessible to both Europe and of course Asia where possible, um, so that we are reaching as many uh, women and non-binary members as possible with our content. Yeah, no, that that's definitely very, very important. Uh, I remember like spending some time in in the West Coast as well. Like, I don't, I'm not a morning person. For me, it's really hard even for me to record podcasts or anything before like 11, and my brain is still not functioning yet. Uh, but I, so I appreciate the the hard work. I'd rather be working at night than in the morning. <laughs> It started not so long ago. How do you see this project growing forward? So we're, as I said, we're we're kind of a brand new club, and you know, we're, our goals are is to really build the club, get content that is educating our community, building that community, and having. I mean, the purpose is to empower women to help them learn and earn. I mean, that's, and D- Dave Pin is such an am- amazing opportunity. I mean, it's, it's a high growth industry within crypto and kind of getting involved in projects right at the beginning, because there was a lot of them that you showcased on Revolution 2024 event is, is really important. I think, um, you know, the more that we can get women, I think women also sort of feel that because it's newer, right? It's a newer industry um, within crypto is that it's like you don't know. So our big, big push is to get 
more, you know, more speakers, more education, and more learning, so pe- so the, our community can really understand um, what is DPIN. Like like Sylvia said, most most of them is like they still, you know, it, it's the uh, the terms, right? Just like when we all joined crypto, it was all the new dictionary that you needed. So it's the same thing, right? So um, that's where our community is. But it's, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, it, there's a lot of growth for it, I see it for our community. Yeah, it's it's definitely not an easy ecosystem to, to get started in at first, uh, as long as you have people around you like supporting and like helping you answer like questions that you think are silly, but actually they're not, right? So just make sure to, I tell like, ask as much as you can. Uh, that's the way to get started. The Scanit Spending Manager is here to help you effortlessly manage and track your personal finances. By integrating multiple data sources, whether it's scanned receipts, expenses you enter manually, or automatic connections to your bank accounts, merchants, and crypto wallets, you'll get a complete view of your financial activities. With Scanit, you're in full control of your data. You decide who gets access to your personal information, where they can access it, and under what conditions. This ensures that any data sharing is done with transparency and your full consent. On top of that, Scanit allows you to benefit directly from your data. When you share your information with businesses, you get rewarded. It's a fair and ethical system where you maintain ownership of your data while earning value from it. With your privacy fully respected, the invite-only alpha is launching any day now with an open beta to follow shortly after. So join the waiting list and Discord community today to be one of the first to experience Scanit and take control of your data. Don't miss your chance to be part of the future of the data economy. Do you guys have any success stories that you'd like to share? Yeah, I would say like um, in terms of kind of the success story. So I, I'd almost sort of see she pen, you know, how people talk about like these money Legos, right? So there's just sort of all of these different uh, dApps that are kind of contributing to this bigger kind of Web3 supercomputer. And in a way, I kind of see she pen as like, you know, the sort of maybe educational Lego or something like that. So it's maybe it's a little bit tricky and at such an early stage to sort of show like really clear like this is something that like only happened it was only made possible because of sheep in but i would say you know like i would count as a success things like you know we have a member who um i mean you you were you were on our, our call you, you can sort of get a sense of how um the community has you know they bring a lot of questions to the space um but we have one member in particular who's a discord name is Bex of Nine, and uh, she was in our session with Demo. You might remember her, actually. I think we we, uh, we had her on briefly. Um, but she she was she was super participative in the session with Demo, and, you know, we got her in the session sort of hooked up to the whole sort of system. Um, and it was just like a really cool kind of um, dynamic that then was carried through into the discord and I think like she got rewarded with some with some merch afterwards and stuff so I would say that's a success story and you know we've got other students as well um, like Manar who is, is, is just been recently going through Shifai who's based in Sudan I think um, she also spoke on the show that you you were on Daniel and um, you know like it's just so I'm just so blown away by the energy of people like her who are so, you know, clear about the benefits that things, you know, that Deepin can kind of bring to her community. And I, I just, you know, just sort of, I think, soaking up that amazement and that wonder and that curiosity and that drive. I mean, so it's kind of like a watch your, watch this space sort of thing at the minute. Um, but we've had some really great conversations in Discord where people are sort of following up, people are asking questions, people are proposing speakers. And I don't think it's going to be too long before, you know, we have someone maybe landing a role or, or contributing maybe as a developer or something like that. And and I think there's something else I think Sylvia might speak to a, a bit more, which goes back to the roots of why we even set sheep and up to begin with. Um, which is, you know, like what's a goal we could maybe set at some point around, you know, how, how, you know, getting someone set up with like uh, a CPU or like actually sort of making a passive income or something like that. You know, it's like, we're still sort of trying to figure out that more hands-on thing and how to kind of structure 
the workshops in that kind of way. But um, yeah, do you want to add something about that, Sophia? I don't know whether it would be a good time to... Yeah, we're trying to challenge ourselves between the three of us to have a very clear outcome that we want to achieve with, you know, as many members of Sheepin as want to participate, whether it's like, I'm going to get a piece of hardware set up on one of these networks to start earning passive income. Um, the compute space right now, I think, is very early. I think all of you can, as you always say, Daniel, is we're so early, but um I, there's got to be, it's, if you think about what piece of hardware is most likely to be sort of sitting idly on somebody's uh, desk, it's probably going to be a spare laptop or a computer, right? Uh, and that way, our members don't have to go out and buy, a, you know, a dash cam. I, I went out and buy, I bought a, um, a high snapper dash cam from the first generation. But, you know, those are not, and those are not necessarily cheap. Um, and not everybody can afford that, but chances are somebody has a spare laptop or a lot of people have a spare laptop at home. So our goal, I think, um, is going to be to, you know, just get somebody, get as many people set up, including myself, um, on one of these networks to provide capacity and really, and obviously learn a little bit of passive income, but that's not really necessarily our primary driver. It's going to be a combination of like, can we do this? Can we even like set up some sort of documentation for ourselves that makes it easy so that we can walk through as a group um, and anyone else who comes after us to be able to do the same thing with their, with their equipment? There's a lot of documentation out there from a lot of these networks, uh, but they're all not always super accessible, you know, a little bit technical. But if, you know, if we're going to do it um, for the benefit of the community, we might as well um, do it together. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I really like this. Uh, there's a project actually that I'd like to, to if you don't know, it's called Accurest. They do transform cell phones into, you know, CPU into like serverless computing processes. But you don't forget about that. The the goal thing is like, how many people have like a an old phone in their drawer, right? That's like okay, it still works fine. It's just like you go, you wanted to get a better camera, but the the processing of that 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 phone is still pretty good. So. There is a project, this project, Acrest, like it, you can just get more life of those devices. One thing that we used to do a long time ago, like 2020, is get like a group of people at the same time, schedule like, okay, this is what you guys need to have for this call. And then together, let's assemble everything. So people have different challenges. I finished this already, and then I'm going to jump and help you. You know, so the kind of like handheld for the first time, and then this these people can also do that for further to their friends and, and you know, family, et cetera, in the home. I think that's something that's really, really interesting. Um, and to get people, like, get the fear out of actually getting started or typing something in the terminal, it's very challenging, it's very frightening. Uh, but if someone's, like, next to you, uh, let's do this together, uh, that person then, you know, gets started. And from that on, it's, uh, it's uh, only uphill, let's say, in a good way. Uh, so I think that's something interesting to do as well. That's really cool. That sounds exactly like the kind of thing that, yeah, we we, we want to be doing. So that's awesome that you think you're making that work. Yeah. And once the person deploy one device, then it's game over, right? It's going to get hooked. Because I was looking for different projects, like, and then and then your house becomes like the Dexter laboratory or something that like full of gadgets and devices. I really noticed that on the call, you were like, okay, wait a minute, I've got this piece of hardware. And you just went, I think you did that like a few times. Like, wait, here's the demo one. Like, yeah, no, my office is, is full of this stuff. <laughs> exactly. How do you guys see the program now growing in the next year, two years, et cetera? I mean, we're, we're going to continue, like I said, was talking about, like, we're going to continue with building, um, you know, our real goal is to get as many women in binary from the Shifi community, the greater Shifi community, which is about 4,000 involved in DPIN. And, you know, it's, and a lot of it, you know, it's, it's when you start a new club or you start a new community, it's all about people don't know what it is first and, and are not aware of it second, right? So it's more of that. Um, I mean, ultimately, if we can get, I mean, I sort of view as DPEN as one of the, the, the hottest things that, you know, for our community to get involved when in, it's kind of, there's a lot of growth in this, as I said before, but it's also there's pro there's some really cool projects that's interestingly a lot of you know women 
because I mean, the barriers with DeFi in general or the crypto industry is that you don't have the technical knowledge. And we have a mix of non-technical and technical people in our community. Um, but it's just more of the, you know, understanding that. And I think Deep Pen is one of those projects, especially the projects like you were talking about, the cell phone, where it's kind of easy, like it's an app on a phone, I presume, that measures, you know, uses extra bandwidth, um, is that it, it's easy things that you can do. And so that's the, the, the what we want to overcome is sort of helping, you know, women in our community and non-binary to sort of understand that. Um, the other thing is that not only growing our community, but just getting uh, the word of the pin out out there. Like, so building our community, bringing more people into the Shifi community, because that is a very strong community um, that has helped a lot of us. And it's just being part of that. And it's sort of what Marguerite said, you know, like, you know, being an ing- being a developer on a, on a project, being, uh, you know, a marketing lead on, you know, on something or sort of building their own project. What, that would be really amazing. And sort of that's where I see in the next couple of years is that it's like phase one is the education and understanding. And phase two is like sky's the limit. Yeah, I can totally see that for sure. And um, what are the advice that you give people, like women, non-binary, everyone that wants to get involved in, in DeFi, DP, and blockchain through the, your group and, and, and Shifi? I think it's one of those things is sort of for, for women, it's that you have to understand permissionless truly means permissionless in terms of just getting involved. And a lot of times, you know, it's like, well, somebody knows more than me. You know, it, it's that barrier that we need to get over, you know, get overcome. And my encouragement to, you know, women listening to this and on Baronary is just, is just do it. Like it's the Nike logo, right? It's like, it doesn't matter because we're all new in this. We're, and it's such a new industry, which is the really cool thing is the pen is new, right? So you can kind of get in at the, at the ground floor. There's a lot of projects that are just sort of like free alpha or alpha that are really interesting, that you can really get a, make a real impact. Um, and so I think it's just overcoming those fears that you don't have to be the know everything to start. It's just, just jump in with both feet. And, and there's the cool thing about our community is that it doesn't matter if you know a lot or a little, like we have a community, it's sort of a, a broad range we're all very supportive. And that's what brought me to Shifi in general, right? Because it was kind of like, oh, you know, I don't know a lot of things. And I, it was a very, I don't say comfortable, but it was a very safe environment. Like, I felt like, oh, okay, so I'm not the only one. And I, we want D-pin, Shifin to be the same thing for women. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think in tech in general, there's this um, imposter syndrome thing that happens, right? Like with everyone. Because you, you see someone on Twitter that's posting how good they are in something else. And they're like, okay, this guy miss, must know. I don't know about this. Maybe I don't know anything, you know. Uh, so that's something that I think everyone kind of fights with, no matter how senior you are. The imposter syndrome always exists. Uh, and understand this is the first step. And then, you know, always asking questions and being honest and like, I don't know. But you're going to, you know, teach me or like I'm going to do some research and I get back to you. Um, I think that's that's pretty cool. Where can people know more about the program and that they can join, that they can participate and hopefully join and sign up and start a dipping project after that? I mean, it's really good. So right now, Shifi is like we are about to go into cohort 12. So there's these seasons that they do and it's just starting. It's on. If you go to Twitter to the Twitter page for Shifi, there's a registration form or how to apply, um, and that's how I got started. And I think that's pro- that's how Sylvia and Marguerite started. Um, so I definitely encourage anyone listening to this to get involved. Don't you know? Fill out the form, apply for it, get started in the program, um, and for participating. Once you're part of the Shifi community, then you have access to our Discord. Get involved in the she pin, you know, our channel and our we, you know, we have our uh, our, our club meeting, so to speak. Um, because you don't know, 
it's like you said, that imposter syndrome. So it's just encouraging people to just just to get involved. I mean, um, the, the the coolest thing is that it doesn't matter what level of crypto knowledge you have, if the sheep by community accepts all. And we have, you know, range that have been in the industry a long time, you know, three, four, five years, and total brand new people. So that's that's the, the empowering thing about it. And that's the only way we're going to grow, right? Because uh, crypto is super small. Like, yeah, I live in a deeping bubble, and then there's the crypto bubble. But once you get out of this, you realize how small everything that we are doing is. So it means that we have a lot of work and, and being exclusive and you know, trying to make things people feel bad and like, okay, this is not for you. That's definitely not the way uh, to go. What are the final remarks that each one of you would like to tell our listeners? Um, I'm happy to go first. I would say, I would say, think about Deepin as an opportunity for, uh, let's say you're a crypto native person. Deepin is such an opportunity to learn an entirely different industry. Um, so, for example, I used to work in at a company called Unilever, which is a consumer packaged goods company. And I emphasize packaged goods because these are physical products. So when you go to a, a grocery store and you see a jar of pasta sauce on the shelf, I used to work on the pasta sauce brand at Unilever. Um, that's a physical item that you feeling, have a lot of physical items around you in your life and your work. Um, the, this is kind of a, a similar concept, uh, but infrastructure. But we don't, we don't, like, you don't know probably, Daniel, how that Dr. Pasta sauce got on the shelf. Just like most people don't know how, you know, uh, wireless communication works. Like, how are the sort of the antennas and the cables all laid? And, you know, how do they all come together to provide internet access? Or, to, and then you can expand that to energy or whatever it might be, telecommunications. Um, so, by participating in the deep hand community, you're learning about how the physical world works, the one that you interact with every day. And I think that makes us all better customers at the end of the day, because why should we pay, you know, $100 a month or $50 a month for 500 megabit um, download speeds when the reality is we probably don't get 500, we probably get like half of that, but we're still paying for it because we don't necessarily have other options. So the more we can get educated about how the world around us works, the more that we can demand better services and understand the value that decentralized physical infrastructure network projects bring to our lives. So I'd say that's for, you know, the, the crypto native people who may be like, hey, I don't know about the pin. That's a reason to get involved. And then on the opposite side, people who are in the space of, you know, infrastructure, um, looking for better ways to build these systems should learn about crypto and deep in and blockchain so that they can bring their expertise to the space and, you know, make better products and offer better services. Because a lot of these people are incredibly smart and passionate and they want to bring better services to the world, but they're, you know, operating within industries that are fairly slow and, you know, old and old, I shouldn't say old, but like so slow to move and improve and change and iterate. Um, but they have the energy that they can bring through space and we should be welcoming them, uh, welcoming them with open arms. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thank you. I guess like, I mean, what I'd have to say is is, is maybe quite similar really, but um, I think, you know, a lot of the time or over the past few years that I've been involved in the space, I've sort of heard over and over again, you know, and sometimes it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but like, you know, what's crypto's use case you know like and and i feel like in deep end it's just so clear because it is sort of where the rubber meets the road in a way you know um and i think you know we really are on the cusp of this huge societal shift in the way that we sort of run our societies the way we're able to coordinate socially and in sort of you know i mean um melton sort of talks about you know we're, we're really working now in the world of atoms and energy you know and that's where a lot of these big shifts sort of occur so i'd say that you know it's really interesting because on the one hand if you look back at the history of the of the us you know like the 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 current sort of global superpower or like you know or whatever we want to maybe sort of <laughs> a little bit less uh, a little bit sort of more precarious maybe these days but um 
you know, it sort of was built on these like cooperative sort of, you know, it was cooperatives basically that kind of built out the in, the energy infrastructure back when, right? And so now we're sort of seeing how we can combine like everything that we've been learning over the past sort of hundred, few hundred years with that sort of more cooperative element and it, and kind of bringing in this new sort of cypher punk kind of energy as well. And so, yeah, I'm just really excited for where it's going. And, and, and I suppose my message would really be to encourage any women non-binary listeners to the podcast to come and find us at she as she fi and come and join sheep in yeah and i think for for me i mean is that you know women and non-binary is about four billion in the world right so the industry and and the coolest thing about and what's excited me about joining the crypto industry at large was there was no it didn't matter where you lived where you were from your background so forth right it was it, it's a very open ceiling type of industry. And, and, in, and you talk about deep in, there's so much opportunity. And I think with, um, I encourage everyone that's listening to this is sort of really check out, not just because deep in is the hype thing that you hear about, right? But more that there is a so much uh, practical use case for what the projects are being built. I mean, it, it when you look at the DeFi industry, it's very much finance, right? So it's it's it feels like if you compare it to the to the real world, like the stock market, right? So people understand that, but this is something that you can that's physical that you can actually participate in. You don't have to have a lot of money. You know, there's projects that are are much easier to get involved when the, up to you know more expensive projects to you know to buy uh, physical projects. Um, but it's it's really just taking advantage because I see this as really doing a game changer. So I remember when the internet became, you know, was like the World Wide Web was launched, right? You know, when that came about. And I feel that D-PIN for me is the next big thing. It's the next industrial revolution because it's something that it doesn't matter where you live, what you have. We all have the same problems of connectivity sharing so forth and earning and sort of taking that sort of away from the monolithic control of the, the utility systems the telecom systems etc and putting it into the power of the people i think that is empowering and that's why i think dpin is going to make a huge difference much bigger than defi defi is cool i think shefi or shepin or dpin is where it's at <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man! Just give me goosebumps here too you know, with that. But it, it it is true, right? Like I think um, I talked to my girlfriend. She used to work like uh, very close with the European Parliament on crypto regulation. And Deepin is the the angle that they are now using instead of DeFi because a lot of times the politicians like don't like crypto because they think about scammers. They think about only the downside of DeFi. And Deepin is a clear, you know, positive. Uh, on, on crypto so it's 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 an easy one to to start talking but um but anyway i would like to thank you three so much for being in the podcast it was a it was a pleasure it was a lot of fun i want to invite you again in the near future to talk about shipping and then everything that's happening i want to follow up with and see the progress and for everyone listening at home or anywhere in the world make sure to go to deepinhub.io subscribe to the newsletter and join the community because we have a lot of work to do uh, but we are here together to to make a better world. So thanks so much and have a great weekend. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you.